what does a roll of toilet paper have to do with heart disease? So I'm going to use this to show you why a coronary calcium scan, a coronary angiogram, and a cardiac catheterization may not show you if you actually have soft plaque or blockages in your arteries. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Dr. Allo. I'm a board-certified cardiologist. I've been teaching cardiology for a very, very long time uh, on YouTube and, you know, with my patients. So you hear this a lot. A lot of people are like, well, I had a calcium scan and I had a coronary CTA and a coronary angiogram. I even had a cardiac cath. I did a cardiac cath and it was totally fine. They told me I was clean. My arteries are clean, so I don't have any soft plaque. Well, that is false. Let me show you why. Let us use a toilet paper as an artery. This is a model of an artery. And I credit this to my good friend, Terry Simpson, who uh, did this before. This is the art, the art, the muscles of the artery. This inside here, where the blood flows, you know, inside here, is called the lumen. The lumen is where the blood flows through when you inject dye into your coronary arteries, whether it's through a cardiac catheterization or a coronary CTA. We just call that CCTA, coronary CT and geography. You're injecting dye into the lumen. If the lumen is wide open, meaning there's no blockages, it should look fine. It will not look like it's squeezed down. It won't look like there's plugs in it. It'll look like it's wide open. Now, people often misinterpret that. And just so you guys know, coronary uh, CT scans are read by cardiologists. Um, so when people see that their CCTA was clean, they think, I don't have soft plaque. This couldn't be further from the truth. The problem with these kinds of scans is they are luminographies. You are not looking at the inside of the artery. You're not looking in here. This is the muscles. This is the muscularis. The, the endothelium is here. Then you have the intima and then the muscularis layer. You're not looking inside the arteries. To show it to you in a slightly different way, look at, look at this model of an artery, right? You have both sides. This is the more open side here. You have a pretty open lumen. Uh, this side, it finally starts getting crunched down. This would be like the angle kind of we're looking at it this way with the toilet paper. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the artery remodels to the outside as cholesterol and plaque deposits. The artery tries very, very hard to stay open, so it lets the cholesterol push it outside. The muscularis is here, the intima, the endothelial lining is here. It pushes it to the outside to try to keep your artery as open as long as humanly possible. Once it gets to the end, you'll finally notice that it narrows down towards the end. At this point in time, late stage atherosclerosis, the artery cannot remodel outside any further, and it starts to like finally squeeze down. This late stage, or kind of like in this moderate to late stage, is where you start seeing calcium. Now people are like, well, my calcium scan was clean. You could still be like right here having plaque, but my calcium scan was clear. You've got plaque, it's just not serious enough. So that's one thing people don't realize. Back to this model in the cross section going this way, this will stay open. This area here will stay open as long as humanly possible. Finally, at the end, it starts to like kind of scrunch down and close off. We're trying to avoid that. Calcium and cholesterol deposits in here it does not deposit, you know, right in here and start blocking things up. So people are like, well, my coronary, my coronary angiography was clean. We could do a cardiac catheterization, which is the same thing, a cardiac cath, where I take you to the cath lab, I inject dye into your arteries, and I look and I'm like, oh, you got a clean cath. Everything looks great, but you actually have tons and tons of soft plaque. This stuff right here is soft plaque. It is not calcified. The vast majority of heart attacks, somewhere between 75 to 90 percent of heart attacks happen from soft plaque rupture. That is soft plaque. The plaques are um, very unstable. They haven't had time to remodel. Like if we lower your cholesterol, all of a sudden they will remodel. The, the fibrous cap will get thicker and they won't uh, rupture. And I'll keep you know putting graphics up here. But a soft black rupture is the last thing that you want. And for those of you who end up listening to this on audio, if you go to the YouTube version or any of the video platforms, you will see some of these uh, awesome, you know, visuals. So we don't want to wait till you have calcium because that is very late stage, kind of end stage coronary artery disease. That is not what we want. 
We also don't want to wait till the lumen is scrunched down and a CT angiogram or a cardiac catheterization angiogram finally shows disease. That's the last thing you want. Why would you want to be like, whoa, my, my, my coronary artery scan, you know, CCTA was clean. I'm okay. I don't have soft plaque. You could have put a lot of soft plaque. We just have no way of detecting it. Now, there are two ways of detecting it, and I'll put those up here. If I do a cardiac catheterization on you and I'm inside your artery, now I'm inside here, like I've got my catheter, you know, going in here, there's something called optical coherence tomography or IVIS. I put my little wire, you know, through here, it goes into your artery and inside your artery, I can put this little wire called IVIS. It's called intravascular ultrasound. With IVIS, I can actually see past the lumen. You'll see in the IVIS pictures that I put up here, there's the lumen, which is usually black or not colored in. Um, the optical coherence one is like black and then there's orange around it. The orange is this muscularis part. So in back to our toilet paper model, this would be black. The muscular muscles and intima would be the orangey color. You can actually see soft plaque. You can see dissections. The resolution is fantastic. Now, if you have calcium, it does make optical coherence tomography less accurate. Uh, Ivis, the other picture, is this black and white kind of picture. The black is also the lumen. The white grayish areas are the muscular and intima layers. You can see into those with Ivis and you can see soft plaque. You can see all kinds of things. So those are the two ways that are very invasive, which is why we don't do them. People are like, well, you know, why can't we do those on everybody? Because I'm sticking wires into your coronary arteries. Lots of bad things can happen if we do that. You don't want to be doing that unless you have to. So what's the take home message? The take home message is C CCTA, coronary CT angiography, does not really show soft plaque. Now the imaging is getting better. There's these companies that sell AI and the AI can maybe kind of see the soft plaque or guess that it's there. The problem with it too is you got to time the dye injection correctly. This is another error that happens. If the dye is not timed perfectly correctly and there's a little bit of streaming or not enough flow or you know there's like a little bend and it streams after it or like a little eddy flows kind of like in a river if there's you know flow and then there's a bend and a turn a little eddy forms there you're not going to see perfect images and you're going to think there is a blockage there when one doesn't exist we have had plenty of patients that we look at their ct angios and we're like yeah it looks like a 60 percent lesion take them to the cath lab, it's wide open. Or the opposite is true. They have wide open CCTA, take them to the cath lab, uh, no. Well, that one's a little less common, but you get what I'm saying. They don't correlate and they you can have plenty of soft plaque even if the CTA or CT ang uh, angiogram is quote unquote normal, you could still have soft plaque. So the take home message is do not depend on these non-invasive ways. Now, a lot of times we have to do non-invasive things because we cannot take everybody to cath lab. So we do stress tests. Stress test is a functional test. We put you on a treadmill, inject dye. It's very functional. We know very, very accurately whether or not you have significant stable lesions, whether they're intraluminal, extraluminal, in the arterial walls, in the lumen, what have you. We know if you have significant uh, blockages. So if you've got an artery and it's now like this, you know, it's like 50% blocked. It's now scrunched down. We put you on a treadmill. You're going to feel something. If it's significant, you're going to feel something. The perfusion scan is going to be abnormal and we're going to know you have something. If you don't, then you don't. It's a very like yes or no, pretty accurate assessment of a person. Now, if you last 15 minutes on the treadmill and the nuclear imaging is like you might have something, you get a little questionable, we know you probably don't. So a, a CT scan is a functional test. It's not static. It tells us with pretty you know, with 97% sensitivity and specificity, sometimes depending on which kind of test you're doing and how you're doing it and the person that you've got on there. And, you know, the, if, you, if you choose the right person for the right test, you get the answer that is probably the most accurate. Those are my preferred tests. I personally read all these scans, but I personally never order calcium scans. I never order CTAs. Now, your insurance may say, well, we don't want you to do this. We want you to do this. That's a different story. I've never been put in that scenario. If somebody has a slightly abnormal CT scan, um, I'm sorry, a slightly abnormal uh, treadmill or echogram or you know stress test, whatever, the insurance may force us sometimes to do that. And there are certain scenarios where it is a good idea. 
there are scenarios where you want a CTA. 22-year-old comes in and they're like, oh my God, my troponin is high. I'm having a heart attack. And we do a CTA and it's like, eh, it's pretty clean. Why is your troponin high? Do a cardiac MRI. Maybe they have you know, myositis or myocarditis, what have you. Those are times when you should be using those kinds of tests. But the way these people are using them now, they go, oh, I'll just go pay 300 bucks and get a CCTA or 100 bucks and get a calcium score. And that means I'm good. You're not good. So what do you do instead? You know, as a cardiologist, my recommendation would be know what your cal know what your uh, LDL cholesterol is. Multiply your LDL cholesterol by your age. If your LDL cholesterol is 125 and you're 40 years old, you have 5,000 uh, LDL cholesterol milligram years. You know, you've had 125 for 40 years. Multiply it out. It's 5,000. 5,000 is usually the cutoff where you have pretty significant plaque. So in that scenario. We want to lower your uh, LDL quite a bit, and then we know most people generally don't have plaque. Now, another way to do it is just look at your overall LDL. Anybody with an LDL of over 60, now proven by the PISA trial, by the Jupiter trial, by almost any, most of the trials we have now, if you're above 60 milligrams per deciliter on your LDL cholesterol, generally speaking, you probably have plaque the vast majority of normal everyday people. So it makes no sense to be like, well, I want to do imaging and I want to do this and I want to do that. Now, can imaging tell us, like if you scan a 25 year old and they have calcium, dang, they're in trouble. I mean, they're like really in trouble. No one recommends that though. A 20 year old generally is not going to have an abnormal CCTA or a calcium score. But if they do, like they paid for it and they got it themselves and they do, that is really bad. That's a really bad sign. You have end stage atherosclerosis or very late stage atherosclerosis. You need to be managed extremely aggressively, more so than anybody else. So I hope that helps. If you like stuff like this, follow uh, all my different playlists and uh, you know subscribe. This is also available in audio format on most of the podcast players. Search for Dr. Allo Show. You'll get the audio. Obviously, you can play it on YouTube as well. And if you like stuff like this and you want like full access to me where we meet every week on a Zoom live, you know, on Mondays, uh, go to drallo.net slash community. Uh, use the code one month. You get in there for free. You can cancel any time. Uh, but it's drallo.net, D-R-A-L-O.net slash community. You can be in there. You get an app. You can text me. Put Post your calcium scans every day. Post your CCTAs every day. Post your LDL cholesterol, all your lab work, all that stuff pretty much every day. I'd love to see you in there and we will chat in the next video. Peace.